Hello, everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I'm Leon Thomas, and I'm joined by Austin Yorsky and Johnny Maloney for like two seconds there during the time when we, we uh, hit record and before I talk so that I have some room in my audacity for the uh, noise removal stuff. For like two solid seconds, I had like a great idea where I would do the Halloween intro again for no reason <laughs> and just see what happens. Uh, but then I decided uh, better of it because I just – I don't know. I, 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 I don't have that spooky energy uh, in me right now. It's so been, you, I do have, you ran it's, the numbers. You crunched that math and your internal calculus told you that it was funnier to mention you were going to do a thing oh yeah. than to do the thing. How do you figure Big that out? Big time. Look, big time. It's oh. it's been a tiring week. Can like can we admit that? Even even as you know, an, a, a foreigner, I <laughs> I admit it's it's been a tiring week. Yeah. Like I'm if just you... I'm glad it's over. Okay. Um, awesome. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. There's nothing else to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she said. Yeah, Austin. If there's no, uh, if it makes you feel any better, I do have some spoopy stuff that's about to happen uh, on this show. I don't know why. Uh, I don't really mind when people say corny shit usually, but that that made my skin crawl. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Maybe I'm just I'm just fatigued by. I had, I had a spoopy too, actually. But See, so. I didn't bother me when he said it. I like I was charming. But Leon, <laughs> let, let us begin with you. Fair Please. enough. Um, okay, so um, I'm not going to talk much about my trip to Los Angeles, but I will talk about the one thing that was pretty good, and that was when I uh, went to um, Universal Studios Hollywood and went on a bunch of rides and had a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's basically two kinds of rides at Universal Studios Hollywood. One are just like traditional rides, like roller coaster type things that you expect at theme parks. Um, but most of the big rides at Universal Studios, unfortunately for me, is our motion simulators. Right. Uh, I, I've been to the one in Florida, so I like yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. In fact, yeah, uh, there's they... a VHS tape somewhere. I... Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not going to. <clears throat> okay okay it's fine um fine just leave us hanging uh but yeah th basically um years and years ago they made a motion simulator of back to the future and it was a big hit and then uh they just doubled down on that forever and most most of their big rides are motion simulators the transformers ride is that um the minions ride the despicable me kind of thing uh oh i just every threw I just threw up in my mouth a bit. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, every, every, nearly everything there is a motion simulator. And some of them are pretty solid. Uh, even, um, you know, you're... You, but but the, here's the other thing about, about the, the, where I'll divide this up even more. There's two kinds of motion simulators that are there. They are motion simulators where you're just sitting there and you, sh you shake around a little and there's a big screen. Um... And then there's motion simulators where you are riding up to other places, like in a confined space. Like you're going to other uh, screens, and there are little um, things between the screens that are, you know, scary or whatever. Um, but a lot of it is just you're sitting there, and the screen does stuff, and the cart that is not actually going anywhere yeah, is the, just kind the, of shaking. The tubes just kind of go. You're leaning left now. Yeah. And now you're sure leaning are. right. Yeah. I'm – the problem with motion simulators for me is that they all make me queasy, but I still want to go on all of them uh, because but at, during the times when I'm not feeling sick to my stomach and like sweating a lot, um, you know, they can be pretty entertaining. Um, the best one – unfortunately, I went on the best one first and then it was all downhill. Um, now, and the yeah, is it, was it like objectively, and I know that that's a terrible thing to use when we're talking about like experiences, was it objectively the best one or it is, is it, it is wide, it is, is widely considered the best. Okay. 
Yeah, because I mean, it is it is by far the most elaborate. It's the Harry Potter one. They built a Harry Potter land in uh, Universal Studios, and there's good a big, for them. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, and in in addition to like you know stuff going on in front of your eyeballs in a screen, you're also like latched into a big like um, almost like a roller coaster um, apparatus, and they move you in different parts. And there are like animatronic things, like spiders, and they were scary. Uh, I did, I did not like that. There was a whole section, and it was all spiders. <laughs> I was like, I know this isn't real, but I still want to close my eyes a little. Um, but it was good. Uh, they, they, sh- you know, you are genuinely um, being like turned in different directions rather than just like the screen gives you that illusion. Um, and that was all fine. The worst one was the Simpsons ride, and apparently people really like that one. But I, I don't think so. It, it it is one where you're just in a box and there's a screen. But, um, but that sounds very much just like the Simpsons. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, is. Ex- it is extremely popular, but nobody seems to know why. Yeah, um, I say that as a... somebody who still watches The Simpsons. Yeah, I I I stopped watching only last year after almost a lifetime of watching. Um, but yeah, uh, the Simpsons ride was the longest, uh, had the longest line and you would, th- but you know what? Po- uh, popularity does not always equal quality. And it was just, it was basically because all the kids wanted to go on. It. Yeah. But that's, that's... Don't you know, Leon, that the Shawshank Redemption is the best movie of all time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't good. I had more fun in the line because they played like um, new Simpsons material that I had not seen because it's it was made specifically for the park, and I was like, okay, well that was neat, I guess. Um, that's the most Simpsons I've seen in a while. Um, but yeah, the the park itself, like during the day, was fine. I didn't I did rather enjoy the Revenge of the Mummy um, actual roller coaster. Um, it was like a indoor kind of um, uh, Space Mountain like dark ride slash roller coaster thing Mm -hmm. that was pretty good um i i I enjoyed that um also i I had butter beer at the harry potter land and butter beer is basically just root beer or something with like a lot of cinnamon and frothy stuff on top of it and if that sounds kind of dumb it is but it is delicious that's and it costs there's probably egg whites then if it's frothy. I don't, yeah. It's, whatever whatever was in it, I enjoyed it. It cost $7 for a cup. And I, I gladly paid for it. Uh, so I could tell the tale. And it was good. Um, do they do they have shows? Because, like, I when I when oh, yeah. I went to Universal Studios in Florida, yeah. there was, like, there was, like, an Indiana Jones show. There was a Ghostbusters mm. show. There was a Jaws show. Yeah. Well, they def- they definitely don't have Indiana Jones anymore because that's owned by Disney. Yeah. But they do they did have shows. I went to a special effects stunt show and that was cool. Um, it's you know someone was set on fire and it was fun. Um, there right. was there was a wa- there was the Water World show and that has been running since Water World came out, I guess. Wow. And that is that is the uh, that is the legacy of Water World. It has a really good stunt show. Um, I really enjoyed it. They put a lot of effort into it. Um, a lot of, uh, exciting stunts happened and I was, uh, I was amused by it. It was, it was quite good. Um, but I have to say that I would have, because I was so queasy during my entire trip, I would have been mildly disappointed if that was it, but it wasn't because as it got darker, it was time for the park to switch into Halloween mode, even though I went in November. Um, and that meant that they did their, uh, uh, kind of, kind of all these, you remember when I said I went to Bush Gardens and they had these sort of like mazes and they were, you know, they were no, of you, a higher. No, you didn't say mazes. Mostly what you talked about was a fuck show. Yeah, there was the fuck show, but like I, I went to I went to the ma- I went to the mazes. That I went to like six out of seven of them or something, and um, they're you know they're they're uh, like local attraction mazes, but like with a little bit of more of a budget. And but they were you know once you've been on a few of them, you're done. However, Universal Studios Hollywood's haunted attraction maze things put 
Bush Gardens to shame. They were so elaborate and really high quality. I was like, I was kind of floored because I, I had just gone to Bush Gardens and they were fine. But this was like, and and the best part about it, in addition to just it being very polished, each one, the uh, you know, it's universal, so they have the the licensing rights to all of these movies. So I went on the Poltergeist um, attraction where you walk through the Poltergeist house, and Ooh. you know, you're in Robbie's room, and you know, Carol Ann is screaming somewhere, and all kinds of things jump out at you. And this was the only attraction where I, like, jumped. And I was like, ah, son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> I, I had quite a reaction. Um, I there You go in a room. And the clown is sitting there on the chair. And it's almost life-size. So I'm, I'm walking through, like, okay, the clown is going to jump out. Like, like when break. you say life-size, you mean? It's about five feet tall. Yeah, okay. So I figured, like, a small teenager was probably inside. Right. That's what I thought. And uh, I'm walking past it. I'm like, okay, just brace yourself. Someone's going to jump out. And it didn't happen. I was like, oh, okay. That was a false scare. Then I went into the next part. And then you're you're back in another replica of Robbie's room a little later. And the clown jumps out from under the bed um, in a really... It, but it wasn't someone inside of it. It was it was like a mechanical thing where, it, and it happened very unnaturally. And I just like leapt up, and I was like, "Ah, Jesus Christ!" And I got out of there. <laughs> um, it was very good. There were a lot of like animatronic stuff and like huge puppets, and it it was very good. Um, I went on the Purge attraction. Uh, <laughs> it was fine. It was the Purge. Everyone had a wacky mask and jumped out. Um, I went on the trick or treat maze, which I was not expecting to see because that's not like a super well-known movie. It has like a, a cult status. Um, but you go through each of the, uh, short, you know, parts of it, the, the sections in this anthology movie maze. Um, it was pretty darn good. I went on in the walking dead one and that was fun. Um, I went in the Stranger Things one, and that was very good. Um, the Demogorgon was everywhere, and it was very, very nice. Um, someone was, there were, like, live actors, too, like, portraying the characters. Someone was portraying the Paul Reiser character, and in my mind, I thought, I bet you could have got Paul Reiser. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, but it was, they were, they were all good. Um, I went on the one that was just a series of Blumhouse or Bloomhouse uh, productions. Uh, some of the movies I have seen, some I have not, but it was good. Um, and I did the Halloween for the Return of Michael Myers maze, which I can only assume they've just done the other, the previous Halloweens in earlier years. Um, it was good. It was just Michael Myers in every room, <laughs> but it was solid. There's no other villain. And it was um, like play boo. <laughs> it, he was good though. Like the the various Myerses uh, were were very good. Like I said, like um, it just sounds like people jumping out and saying "boo," and in a way it is. But there's just a high production quality to it. Where like even in like yeah, you know, we we can like dump on jump scares in like horror movies all we want, but sometimes they do get you, and it's, they uh, you it's know, true. If they're if they're handled well, and they, they handled this very well, I was impressed. Like uh, jump um, jump scares are effective when doled out with. Insouciance. Wow, that, that <laughs> it was a long pause for a long word. Yeah. Um, uh, the only uh, disappointing thing. Uh, oh, earlier in the day, I went on the uh, studio tour, which was fun. Uh, um, and then at night, there was something called the Terror Tram, and I thought, oh, this will be like the studio tour, um, but like scarier, and people will jump out at the cart and stuff. Um, that's not what happened, though. You get on the tram. And then they drive you, go, you into a lake and hold you, you go under down, the water. If only. You go down a hill. Um, you go way down the hill. That sounds scary. Where the, where the studio tour is. And then um, the, the How steep a driver. Hill. Just no, no. That's not the scary part. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying you go down to where the studio tour is. All right. All right. And on the, uh, the operator, the, the driver in the car – who, uh, you know, talks to you during the regular studio tour, says, 
Okay. And now I'm going to let you off the tram and you're going to walk all the way up the hill. And I kind of like laughed for a second. Like, yeah, good one. Good one. They were serious. Uh, you got off the tram and you just walk up the hill and there were scary things that would happen to you. And I was like, this was not what I was expecting. I'm tired and it's late. I just wanted to sit down for an hour because that's how long the studio tour is. I thought it would be comparable. It's not. You just they just drive you down and then you just walk up and everything's kind of scary. Well, we, and that, you worked off the funnel cake. I guess I didn't have a funnel cake this time. I just I just had um I had a lot of shit though. I I did not eat well. Did you I eat mean, a corn wait, dog? No, I just ate, I can't even remember all the things I ate. None of it was healthy. Um, I I mean that's to be expected in a theme park. But I kind of I went overboard a little. Um, hey, it's okay, Leon. I forgive you. I, thanks. Um, by the time I got up, um, I. I wasn't feeling too well. I, I was using um, uh, sunscreen kind of a spray on uh, my exposed uh, body parts um, all, all day because I didn't want to get a sunburn like I got when I was at Disneyland. Um, and I did not. But the side effect was uh, some of it got in my eyes and I was just kind of miserable until I could find uh, a bathroom. And after that long walk and my eyes feeling bad... I didn't want to wait an hour, which was apparently the wait time for the next, um, the final uh, maze, which was like a Universal Studios, like classic horror, like Dracula and Frankenstein kind of thing. Right. I was like, okay, the, I'm The dark I'm done. universe. <laughs> yes. I was, I was done. Uh, I, I, I had enough. I didn't want to stay there for another hour in a line and then another 15 or 20 minutes in the maze and then walk all the way back. I was like, yeah, it's, it's, I'm finished. And I got a lift. Uh, back to my hotel, which uh, uh, I was like the first time I started using ride sharing because I had to there. It's so much cheaper uh, than cabs, but apparently uh, it's it's because it's so unregulated. It's also way more dangerous for people, especially women. Mm -hmm. um, but I, uh, I saw I, I saw a video about uh, somebody who tried to take an Uber to a voting poll yesterday. Oh yes, I, I heard about that. Yeah, that was uh, that is terrible. Um. So I hope uh, that gets fixed. Uh, but uh, for me, I, I, I still did, it, I still ended up spending a lot of money because I had to go everywhere. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, then I went back to my hotel and I, uh, that was it. And that's pretty much all I want to say about my trip to California. Um, okay. I hope that was, I hope right. that was exciting for everyone. Uh, but I am done now. I have a little bit more uh, for other stuff. But like, please, someone take the baton. This, this, was, not, this was not planned. But, I mean, the fact okay. that you're talking about going to Universal Studios. When I was in Universal Studios, Florida, as, like, oh, God, I must have been, like, a, like 10 or 11 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I hinted to this earlier when I said there's a VHS tape out there. Mm -hmm. um, they had a green screen attraction. Mm. Where my entire family oh. got dressed up in Star Trek uniforms. Oh, okay. and, and you play out this like encounter with the Klingons. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a VHS tape at my mother's home. Uh-huh. Where I dress up as like an eleven year old kid. Okay. As the captain of a Star Trek starship. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's, That's great. It's a beautiful, nerdy, geeky thing. I believe I believe it's geeky. Oh, it's <laughs> I mean it, it it's extremely geeky. Yeah. But it exists, and none of you will ever see it. That's that's fair. Except me. Um, yeah. <laughs> Except me. <maybe. laughs> I haven't heard from Austin in a while. Yeah, Austin. Every time I talk about a theme park, you completely zone out. You must hate when I have fun. He's a, uh, like so. he's a Floridian, right? Like theme yeah. parks. Are I realize I realize you're like ensconced in theme parks down there, even though you don't really live near or Orlando. 
but uh but yeah if if you got some some topics this week austin like like lay them out i mean florida is basically just a series of swamps theme parks and graveyards kind of loosely connected by the the <laughs> suffering huddling masses but i, mean, I, I would we love all to know go to a grave type but at the same time it all must get quite tiring <laughs> If I would love to go to a theme park called the Graveyard Swamp, mm-hmm. uh, it, just, it, just, it just sounds really cool. I don't I'm know. Sorry. That go sounds ahead. quite damp. <laughs> it, it would be. <laughs> welcome, um, welcome to the Graveyard Swamp. Here's your hip waiters. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Austin. I'm sure you you always have infinity things. So please. That is my nature. Yeah, I just couldn't tell when the sentence was going to end. There, I kept getting like one more clause every time I was ready to jump in. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, it's I really talk sneaky. too much. Um, yeah. So I, I, okay, I'll talk about these things, but I'll just know ahead of time I'm not happy about them. Fair. <laughs> and I know you're not going to be happy about them either. Um, right. But that's the lot we have drawn in life. Um, so I'm, I'm just happy to hear you. That's, I was going to say reassuring, but in these dark times, honestly, just someone looking at me and not shooting fire out of their eyes is just gently reassuring. Oh, I looked at the news by come, accident come earlier. Come to Johnny. Come to Johnny. It's okay. <laughs> I lost 10 years oh out, off my life thinking about the constitutional crisis. Our country is exploding. Anyway, <gasps> um, I played more Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh. And I know that's not going to be the most exciting thing for you guys specifically, and also every person who cares about video games has either been playing or talking about this game for the last couple of weeks. So, Except me. Well, then you must not be a real gamer. Oh. <laughs> Johnny. It's, it, well. It might not... <laughs> it might not be exciting for our audience, especially everyone, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, like, go for it, man. Just... Like, just get, just get in there. I mean, okay, so I'm not going to give, like, a full review or anything. I'm, I feel like I'm coming up on the end. Like, it has a very much, like, ah, so it's come to this vibe around the part of the story where I'm at. Um, but last week I talked a lot about the mechanics and the fact that it wasn't very fun and it was really impressive how detailed it was. All that stuff's still true. But as I play mm-hmm. it, I think there's a, a more interesting thing going on here that maybe you guys can help me talk about, which is oh. that they have built this incredible clockwork kind of world that you can live in. Like your hair grows in real time. You have to take baths and you have to hunt for food. Ew. Your, why? I, your horse, I didn't even know about the hair in real time. The horse poops in real time. Everyone knows about the horse balls. Uh, you got to like take care of this camp and you have to get food and you have to get medicine. <laughs> and, it sounds terrible. And you have to keep your horse happy. So you got to brush him and buy him stuff. And it's like this game has so much going on that – it could just be an immersive cowboy themed walking simulator. Like there's like 30 hours of just pacifist content in here. And yeah. I almost wish there, uh, no, I do. I wish there was space in the video game industry for that. Just someone to make it like, Hey, you want to live in the 1890s for like a couple dozen hours? Just like hang out and just like, Go to saloons. Go to you can actually go. You can just buy a ticket and like go to the theater, and like well, watch people play. You can just sit in the audience and watch a performance in real time. There, there are like it, it, this is you know there are so many quote unquote simulator games out there. You know, I mean, there's a lot of games that have the word simulator in the title, and usually they're not actually simulators. It's like a, it's like a subgenre of i mean this isn't how it started but it's like a subgenre of youtuber kind of games now thanks to things like goat simulator and that kind yeah. of stuff but, but there but there are real ones like train yeah. simulator is a huge industry and like the 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 the, the trucking simulators like oh yeah uh, uh, you, you know european truck simulator yeah yeah and and uh american now which is like drastically expanding yeah i mean um, I, I grew up with the sims and sim ant so i understand the the joy of a simulator but those are always very abstracted right yeah and i've been thinking yeah. about abstraction a lot recently this came up on the episode of dice funk we just recorded where i was talking about D combat and i was like when you have two people fight in D, it's like you roll then i roll then you roll then i roll but you realize that they're not just standing in an open field taking turns hitting each other's swords it represents 
an epic mythological clash of steel when you imagine in the you know uh the the lord of the rings version of that fight and that's yeah what... like every round is supposed to be six seconds or something like that yeah i mean that doesn't hold up under really any scrutiny but i you no. get it <laughs> In the same way that, like, in a classic JRPG, it's like, all right, I'm going to use attack, and then you're going to use defend, and then I'm going to use magic, and I'm going to use item. And you realize that you're in the fiction, you're supposed to understand that this is happening more fluidly. And yeah. In, I, it, I, I, read, I read something years ago that talked about HP as not being hit points, but, like, hero points. Yeah. The un- what? The Uncharted yeah. devs actually specifically <laughs> invoke this, where... Uh, Nathan Drake, if he's out of cover, people shoot at him and the screen gets dark, but he's not actually getting hit. It's only the last, it's only the, the, when he's out of health, quote unquote, that the bullet finally hits him and he dies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so hero points are kind of this thing where it's like, you expend hero points to avoid something that would have hit you. But then like, when you get down to zero, somebody finally gets the knife in your ass (laughs) ass <laughs> and i think that's a that's a like a kind of mid step between that and the thing in like the david cage games where you you can't fail like no matter what you do the story will continue it's just that if you fail you'll get like a scar or an npc will die or someone later will be like wow you really fucked that up huh like, or something hilarious happens yeah i mean there's i love which the... is which is the case in every david cage game i've ever played I was thinking of the David Cage game, like montages of like failing every check during a chase, or you just bump into every single person, you hit every fruit stand. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but video games are obsessed with fail states. Uh, obsessed maybe is a little judgmental. They feel like they have to include them, like that's a fundamental part of what makes a game a game. There's some people who define them that way. I think that's closed minded, but you know, whatever floats your boat. I don't think games need fail states. I think we can be more experimental with that anyway we got a little off track which was about abstraction right we realize that video games are abstractions of kind of fiction and our minds fill in the blanks so when someone like changes their weapon and a new sword just appears in their hand we're not like where'd that come from this is bullshit i'm taking this back to gamestop (laughs) fuck that they lied to me this is a trick these are dastardly shenanigans i wanted realism damn it yeah But Red Dead Redemption 2... Why are there women in World War II? Yikes. Jesus. But Red Dead Redemption 2 is like the first large-scale game which largely tries to avoid that. You, in painstaking detail, just do everything. At every point where they could do the normal, sensible shortcut, they don't. They force you to go through every little thing. You have to shave. You have to make breakfast. You have to do chores in the camp. You have to chop wood. You gotta carry... You don't have to shave. Awesome. Uh, yeah, you'll get you'll get like a fucking wild ass facial hair situation and people will start calling you like a smelly boy if you don't and <laughs> not if you take a bath exact words um <laughs> the, so on one hand i think this is a, an admirable amount of uh kicking the tires on video games and just questioning basic assumptions why do we have to do things the way they've done just because every assassin's creed game does the open world this way we can't we can experiment we can do something different and i actually like that and i think i would i want to live in a world where there are a bunch of kind of big budget walking simulators where it's like oh i just want to run around in the 1600s france or whatever just fuck around but you can't because well, the only kind of games that get no, those no. budgets are ones where you kill hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people you know you know that the the newest assassin's creeds i think the last two have like tourist modes yeah I mean, and with mods, you can just, like, turn off violence or whatever in some games. No, but, no, like, like they're baked into the game at this point in time. No, yes, Odyssey I, yes, and... Uh, you, the la- Odyssey and uh, Origins. Origins, yeah. Like, you can, you can really just be like, I just want to hang out. But those games weren't greenlit for those modes. Those are things they no. added in. Those are essentially just mods. It's just, like, f- awesome. official mods. Yeah. Awesome. What what you're describing is the holodeck. Um, you, you just you're just kind of there, and you can kind of make your own fun. And I I, I get what you're saying, um, but if it doesn't really feel real, like in a in like a deep like future VR way, for me personally, 
I don't need that in my life. And but, but, that's but, why but. I played the Exorcist VR. Yeah, but, but 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 I do I do I do believe yeah of course there should be uh, spaces for people who just want to play a game where you more or less dick around in a different century or or, or some other scenario that sounds you know cool for them but that's just not what I want to get out of video games personally no um, no really because Leon I I played The Exorcist in in VR. I, b- I believe you, Johnny, and we can definitely talk about that immediately after uh, I'm done shattering Austin's illusions. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, but I I remain firm were... and unshattered. But continue. No, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Um, in, in all in all seriousness, like a game where I do nothing. To I, I there's there's something in my brain where I need to feel productive. Yeah. All the time. To- all the time. And 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 not just like in a game, but like in in the real world. If I'm just sitting here and I don't do anything for like a solid ten minutes, like if I'm just like scrolling through my Twitter and I just kind of get hypnotized by the nothingness of it, I kind of like feel like shitty for a second. I was like, oh, I should probably actually do something instead of just sitting here in my underwear, um, you know looking at things from days ago that i that i do not need to look at i also have um, the late stage capitalism brain worm leon <laughs> and that's why i feel the need to differentiate i'm not talking about just building environments to walk around in i'm saying right. a version of red dead with all of the pacifist content where you can play poker you can play five finger flay you can play okay. uh the the hunting you can go to a show you can talk to uh all the people in your camp you can oh sure well that's well that's that's well that's that's different that's not a walking set simulator that's just a series of games I mean, who's, like there is who's to there, say there, who's to that? no 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 I, I, no, I'm not saying that walking simulators are not games. I'm just saying that, like, when you say, oh, you can play poker in this game. Yeah, there is video poker. That is totally already a game. It's fine. Um, no, I get that. There are hunting games, of course. Um, there there, the, there can be games where you there are a series of things you can do in the game that are not necessarily violent, but are also, like, you know, uh, engrossing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I just don't think there's a meaningful distinction here, because, like, Journey is a pretty widely accepted wo- accepted like walking simulator and there's puzzles in that mm-hmm. game it's fine yeah i'm saying that red 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 dead redemption that was harder to say than i thought would be a pretty interesting game if every 10 minutes you didn't have to become the most mass murdering man <laughs> in all of history <laughs> that's fair yeah i mean i haven't played it but i i can i i only played red red uh, yeah right? right it is hard to say red dead redemption one uh, but I can I could probably say that since I did not enjoy that game at all, I would have been fine if there had been literally anything else for me to do besides ride on my horse and shoot people in while on the horse. Or I don't know, I don't even remember what I did in that game. Mostly ride around on the horse and shoot people. Yeah, yeah, that sounds yeah. right. That sounds right. Occasionally um, lasso someone. Yeah. Um, can we just talk about just for a second how hilarious the word lasso is? I've, it's pretty good. I've it's, never heard anyone say it like that. It's a pretty, really? it's a pretty funny word. Is it lasso in Canada? Is that how you do it there? Well, how do you, how do you say it? Lasso. Lasso. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I did not realize this was a point of contention, and it had never occurred to me that we could disagree on the pronunciation of lasso. But here it's we not, are. It's not. It's not important enough. This is not a hill I need to die on. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Frankly, but still, it's, it's, it's just okay. like I'm almost positive I've seen a cowboy movie where someone has said lasso because because there there's no way that the, my only experience with the word lasso is Johnny saying it right now, <laughs> um, or, or or other scattered Canadians. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe maybe cowboys do say that. We're, I don't know. We're a rare bunch. Yeah. If you're a cowboy, write the show. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah. I, anyway, I'm not sure if I have more, more to say about this game I have not played. But yeah, I feel you. I want an in-depth review of the story, Leon, point by point. <laughs> I bet you could actually probably guess, right? If you were uh, okay, all right. Here's what I yeah. bet. Oh, here's the, a fun story. Game. Uh, here's what I bet Red Dead Redemption Two is about. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm a I'm a guy. I'm definitely a man. Absolutely. I'm white, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but sun I'm kind tan. Of, I'm kind of, here. Here's here's what, what I think my personality is. <laughs> I bet, I bet I'm gruff and tough, but not 
always mean so that the char- so that there are moments where the character can relate. Uh-huh. Of course. Um I bet that something bad has happened to someone who is close to me and now I need to <laughs> rectify this situation because it it can't be something that's completely internal to myself. Something bad had to happen to someone else. Probably a woman uh and I need to uh get shit done and get on my horse and be a real man's man about it. It's like half credit because the story of the game is something bad happened to like your adopted family. It's like a series. It's a series yeah. of those. Yeah. 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 There's not enough. Okay. There's yeah. not enough to stretch the the content over just one. I have to protect this person, so I'm going to go kill people. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's a game. Okay. Leon. All right. Fair enough. I'd like to yeah. offer you a job. Um, <laughs> to write games for Big Games Incorporated. A new company okay. that I'm starting that makes uh, big games, <laughs> incorporating certain I, things. I, I bet, I bet my character is like kind of like um, moralistic, but also has conflict inside of him. But at the very same time, you can murder so many people, and it will never actually come up in the main storyline that you murdered a lot of people. The game can't seem to decide if he's conflicted because he mm-hmm. has. I bet. <laughs> It's conflicted about his being conflicted. It's very <laughs> conflicted. Yeah, occasionally he's conflicted, and I actually think that's some of the strongest stuff in there. Like, uh, So you do a lot of murdering, obviously, and a lot of stealing, but there's some interesting stuff in there. One of the things the gang does, uh, one of the things the gang does, I don't know how I fucked that up, um, is lend money to people and then go beat them up and get it back at their loan sharks, basically. Oh, and that is Jesus. essentially legal, but it's, it's like the most legal thing they do, right? I don't, I don't think beating people up to get their money back is up and up in that those times but it's portrayed as like the the one legit thing they try to do and every, mm-hmm. those are like side missions you do and as the game goes on he seems to get more and more conflicted about doing that stuff the murdering basically never comes up he's just like i'm a bad man i kill people it's just the way it is the world's tough sometimes but when you have to go and like beat the shit out of poor farmers in front of their kids or whatever he like looks away he can't make eye contact and he's just like i don't know if i can do this <laughs> but i bet he still does though right uh, actually i just got a choice whether or not to keep doing it <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's, it's uh, okay so the game doesn't actually want to say anything about anything it it just never mind. there's a really this that's a great question leon mm. that you didn't finish making there's a great scene where somebody is talking to the main character about, uh, like, uh, the character, the NPC is, like, uh, of European descent. I think that there might be an immigrant. And he's like, oh, back okay. in, you know, Ireland or whatever. I think it's the Irish character. It might have been a British character. They're talking about how back in the old world, uh, things were done this way or that way. And the, the protagonist, um, Arthur is his name. Arthur says, like, you know, I was, I'm not one for politics. I don't really take sides. Uh, oh, I'm not done. I'm not done. Leon, that's the that's the opening to the scene. And the NPC says back like, my daddy always used to say, not taking a side is its own side. And then Arthur, the hero, comes back with the, the quip to end the conversation, the punchline, the stinger, the winning jab. He says, well, I just hate everyone equally. Uh, I think that's a that makes a good case that South Park has poisoned culture irreparably. <laughs> <laughs> it has damaged our fucking brains. We're completely in, in, incapable of making moralistic judgments like maybe murdering people is bad because I don't know. Both sides seem like pretty fucked up, right? If you think about it. Hey, Austin. Yeah. Takes mm. a lot out of me to not kill people. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I. 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 Everything you said about this game may, makes me want to like bury it and salt the earth, and I just like I can't. Yeah. Can we? Um, can we just admit that Rockstar Games aims uh-huh. way too high and doesn't understand what the fuck it's doing? <laughs> Okay, I haven't played one in a long time, so I can't speak to it too much. Last I played was um, Grand Theft Auto 4, which I did not like. 
um, mostly because of just this weird. Um, I know, I know, people are tired of people talking about how uh, looter narrative dissonance uh, at this point in in the, in the year of our Lord twenty eighteen. But it's true. But, yeah, but the the whole the the I'm I'm in this. They they do so much to make me feel like I'm in a story, and then do so much to ruin that. I want to doesn't... come to America and That's... be clean. Your next That's my thesis, is though. To kill thirty-eight guys. I think there should yeah. be the the version of Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead, where it's just a cool recreation of a world you can live in, and then the version which is just like thirty story missions about a bad dude. Yeah, I think those are would, both good products. I would I would okay. love to like buy that game and have the option of like, what do you want to do? I mean, Minecraft has done that. Fucking Minecraft. Where it's like, hey, do you want to play survival mode or just, like, make shit? Yeah, I, I think that's more I, and more going to be, like, the future. Fallout 76 is very much, like, it's so hard to make single-player content. Why don't you just figure it out? Fallout 76. <laughs> Leon, were you going to cut in there? Oh, I was going to say that's a fair point about Minecraft, but I refuse to say anything positive about that game. No, so. I'm like, I'm not praising it or anything like that. It's... <laughs> really okay. super trippy in VR, but... You can't really clickbait the audience inside the podcast. That's not really how this works, Leon. <laughs> so, yeah, that's fair. That's fine. Um, so we're at we're at 40 minutes. We can move on. I, I, I could talk more about yeah. this game. I think it's an incredibly fascinating thing as a representation of eight years of labor and hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe more, and you know, hundreds and hundreds of people's work, some undercompensated. It is you know, for better and worse, a very important video game in history in the same way that, like, Caligula is an important film in some ways. Uh, that's not a... You're not wrong. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. it's worth it's worth getting into, even if I don't think it's great. Obviously, I'm still of the opinion the combat, not great. The story, not great. Uh, some of the things it tries are interesting. It mostly fails. And I do love to pet the dogs and horses. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have I have three other topics, but each one will last like a minute. Do it, do um, it, do it. So, so just go, I'm just gonna rip through them go. real quick. One is one is just like a dumb story. Um, on the way to Universal Studios Hollywood, um, I saw someone uh, driving a DeLorean, which was the first time I had ever seen like one of them in the wild. Um, they're they're not they're not around so much. Um, and like, I, I, you know, I was drive, you know, I was on my way to universal studios where they used to have a back, back to the future ride. And you would think that in my mind, I'd be like, that's neat. That's a neat thing that just happened to me right now on vacation, going to a theme park. But what I really thought was, Oh, fuck off. Oh, fuck off with your DeLorean. <laughs> You're driving a fucking DeLorean down this road. You piece of shit. Uh, that's what I thought. I have no justification for this. I just, <laughs> I don't know. There's just something. There's something in me that if if I see anyone doing anything needlessly luxurious, uh, I don't know. There's just something inside uh, my poor brain that I I find offensive. Um, just wanted everyone to know that. The second thing, I I have a great idea for a business. It's called No Baby Airlines. It'll make billions of dollars. Uh, it's, that's all there is to it. You can have you can have a child on there, but they need to be five years old, and they also need to sign a waiver <laughs> that promises they will shut the fuck up. Um, I've never I've never been one of those people who was like, oh, leave your baby at home because you know, like you need to take your kids too. You know, I understand that, but I could not deal this time because I was sitting right next to. A woman and her, I don't know, like three or four year old child, too old to be carrying on like that, who had a temper tantrum that lasted five and a half hours. And the mother, rather than, you know, performing her, you know, due diligence. <laughs> he almost said stop, duty. <laughs> her patriotic <laughs> service. Go on. Right. Right. Uh, instead of actually, you know, doing something about this, just completely checked out. And just let this occur in front of everyone. And people are, you know, people are people. And we're on this enclosed space. And they're not going to throw a fit about this kid, even though we all hate that this is happening to us. Because it's a child. And what are you going to do? Like, lecture a mother while we're, like, thousands of feet in the air? 
<laughs> you know, you, you can't be confrontational on a plane for a lot of reasons. So that w that just happened around me. Luckily, I had my headphones on and I listened to things, but it was piercing and I, you know, it was bad. Um, after the flight, someone unloaded, <laughs> but not to her face, because again, let's not be shitty to this woman who clearly has a bad life. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like how I tell you're miserable, you have children. Must suck. Right. Like, um, a few rows in front of this woman and myself, um, as we were getting out, someone was saying, you better shut that kid up, too. <laughs> Something along those lines. It's like, it's too late, obviously. He just wanted to get his digs in. Yeah, at that point, um, it's just about being able to look yourself in the mirror later. <laughs> right. Um, on the way back, she was also on the return flight, but she did not sit next to me. She sat a few rows behind me. Still was an issue with the kid. But I was further away enough and my, my headphones were on where I didn't have to experience it very not, very much. However, I did sit next to an, another baby, like a, but, but, but smaller, like a one-year-old. So well-behaved. So cool. Like the coolest baby. Just smiled and sucked on a pacifier sometimes and like played little dumb, you know, games with the mother and, and the father. Um, just, just, oh, just such a great baby. Um, it almost made me want to rethink my business venture, but then I heard a scream and I was on board again. Um, so that, that, that's what I wanted to say about that. And my last thing is uh, I do have something wrestling related to talk about. It won't take long. But, um, there's a Japanese professional wrestler named Tetsuyo Naito, and he's very good. He's very good in the ring, and he also just has a lot of charisma. Um, his whole gimmick is that he doesn't give a shit. Um, his, his, his crest phrase is tranquilo. Um, he, uh, he basically like, he like, and once he like tosses someone out of the ring, like for the first time, he just gets in the ring and sort of like lies down in like a Jeff Goldblum kind of like shirt off in Jurassic Park pose, like whatever, it's fine. You know, I'm sexy and like, I don't care. And then they get back in the ring and they wrestle. Um, and that's great. Everyone loves this guy. He's very good. Um, so a few months ago. Uh, the word kind of leaked that uh, WWE wanted to pick him up because he, he wrestles for New Japan. And, you know, he, he didn't take the offer, obviously, but nobody really knew how what went down. But here's what went down. Um, a bunch of WWE officials were in Japan, and they sat him down in a restaurant. And he, you know, he was invited, and they, they all sat down to have dinner. And he immediately... Like, review, like, he knew he was not going to take this contract. But they had a meal, and then he excused himself to go to the bathroom, and he ducked out so that WWE would have to pay the check. <laughs> because he doesn't give a shit. Um, not a cool thing to do. A huge dick move. But super cool to do to WWE. Uh, there are different standards when dealing with, with this particular company. I don't feel bad. Um, those are the things I wanted to talk about. I'm completely done. Uh, I, I have no more topics. We have seven more minutes, I guess, or so before uh, <laughs> questions. So uh, if anyone else wants to just jump in, like, go ahead. I got nothing more. I've got stuff. Ooh, oh, hit, hit me with your stuff. All right, so the first thing is um, on Netflix, there's a movie called The Apostle. Okay. Watch it. Mm. Um, I, I, like, I'm not going to talk about it, but it stars Dan Stevens, uh, who you might know from Downton Abbey. If you're... I definitely do not, but that's okay. Um, who you might know from Legion. I definitely do not. But again, you, who you, you don't might have to, know you don't... from the guest. Yep, yep, that's the one. Yep. <laughs> that's the third one. Um, yeah, it's um, it's also got uh, Michael Sheen in it. Oh, okay. And ooh, like I said earlier in the episode, I had a I had a spoopy. Um, yeah. This is that movie. It oh, okay. Is it is tense and mm. good and oh just like so well shot. It's um Gareth Michael Evans actually directed who weirdly enough, like I talked about um 
uh, uh, Indonesian martial arts films, I yeah. think, last week. Mm-hmm. And I said, like, The Raid Redemption? Yeah, so apparently uh, Gareth Michael Evans directed The Raid Redemption. And okay. this is his new movie. And it's a okay. Netflix exclusive. And it's... Good. Oh, okay, okay. Um, also, um, like, I, I, I don't want to say anything about the movie because it's, it's better to be seen. Um, this week killed me on music. Like, completely. Spencer Cruz Moonface came out with a new album. Dan Mangan has a new album. Um, favorite of the show, Chris Keen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, has two new albums. <laughs> I listened to Lowe's new album as well. The only Mormons I like. Um, and um, Elias, uh, or sorry, Alias, and and Dose One put out an an album together because <clears throat> I don't know if you. You guys know this, but like one of the founders of uh, Anticon Records, um, uh, Brendan Whitney, that's right, uh, um, passed away earlier this year, um, and he made an album with Adam Drucker, um, known as Dose One, who has done video game soundtracks for games like, um. Fuck, what is it? Like, Samurai... Uh, Samurai Gun. Right. Um, he did uh, Gang Beasts. Um, so they they got together earlier this year and made an album together called Less's Orchestra. And uh, if you buy it on Bandcamp... Um, all the proceeds go to Brendan Whitney's family. Um, I am just overloaded with music right now. Um, nice. Chris Keen's albums are fucking amazing. Uh, Low is doing some new things. Uh, Dan Mangan, his new album is out. Guess I've got a troubled mind. Um, but like, Moonface's new album is fucking killing me. It's like, so. it's 90 minutes long. Oh. And tells two stories that are intermingled. I just, like, I, I cannot, if you go to Bandcamp and look for Moonface, the album is called This One's for the Dancer and This One is for the Dancer's Bouquet. It kills me. And I like I know I've I've been really vocal uh, in my support about uh, Spencer Krug's uh, Spencer Krug's pardon me um, work in the past, but God damn! Like Austin, he does heartbreaking bravery, like the song, mm-hmm. but like kind of jazzy. <laughs> It's it's so like it just like nobody I know, no artist I've ever heard remixes his own work like Spencer Krug. It yeah it, it like fuck. Also, I I watched the first season of Ozark. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Questions. So- solid review. Um, like, yeah, yeah, we can do questions. Um, yeah, we're about at question time. I do want to say real quick that, um, in Red Dead, I have three horses and they are named Violet, Skittles, and Unicorn. Boom. So, Aww. my legacy lives on. Yeah. Also, I have here written on my note something that should only take a second to talk about and that there's a new Bubsy game and our friend wrote it. Yeah! Go dance! How it's just there's so much unpack. It's such a short sentence. There's a new Bubsy game and our friend wrote it. But when you really peel back the layers, it just exposes that this universe is fundamentally absurd. 
but sometimes in a good way. Johnny, do you want to explain to the audience? Um, okay. So, um, ex, uh, Blistered Thumbs writer and very dear friend of mine who has slept in my bed. <laughs> That's how I introduce him to people. He slept in Johnny's yeah. bed, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, is working for Choice Provisions. Um, the, um, the company that does the, uh, uh, bit trip run games. Yeah, they're, all the different bit trip stuff, formerly known as Gaijin Games, they changed their name yeah. to Choice Provisions. They also did Woe Dave and Space Dave, I believe, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so apparently, somehow, <laughs> they gained the rights to Bubsy. And, um, dance, my boy. I assume and he's like, yeah, I'm going to make a new Bubsy game. I assume most people know he's probably just defined our terms. Bubsy is a famously horrible game series. Everyone just either unplayable no. or just no. infuriating. Now, hold on. It wasn't, it wasn't so bad in its first iteration. It had fall damage and it was a platformer. I feel like they pretty much signed their own death warrant there. It was. It's from a different era when everyone wanted to have a sassy mascot platformer because this was the heyday yeah. of Sonic the Hedgehog and uh, maybe around the time of Crash Bandicoot. I don't know if it was a little before or a little after, but everyone wanted... Before, Yeah, I believe. Everyone wanted their own Sonic the Hedgehog, and there's just endless graveyards filled with these fucking losers. Bubsy, the, probably the most infamous of them. Bubsy 3D may be the most unfinished game ever released to like any <laughs> mass market right now now that steam is basically just an open sewer i guess we can't say shit like that anymore like there was a time when you could pretty much just say like oh the worst games of all time et for the atari and like bubsy 3d i guess um now nah. yeah but hang on yeah but there was also bubsy visits the james terrell retrospective at the arcane kids institute museum <laughs> Yeah, which is a, a surreal, uh, I guess, tribute art piece that's not official Bubsy canon. <laughs> I feel like there's so many different titles. No, we no I'm pretty here. sure it's it's canon. It's canon in that they don't have the license. It was released for free. It's not the same studios. Also, the Arcane <laughs> Kids did a video game where you can get Sonic pregnant. True. Um, yeah. I, but, I mean, is that physically impossible as he is a fictional character do people know about sonic dreams collection and bubsy visits the james trail retrospective i feel like people like us like, are like oh yeah i remember that joke from like five years ago but also it I, must be impenetrable to normies i feel like people should know okay well there are some people out there doing some interesting work god check up on them our boy dance out there maybe making the first good bubsy game ever what sick i'm i'm pulling for you dant in four ways one yeah that's a cool gig yeah. if you can get it because either you succeed and you're the dude who actually made something out of bubsy or you fail and it's like oh another bad bubsy game who cares like <laughs> welcome to notoriety <laughs> yeah th it's not much to lose everything to gain um, all right, I guess it's question times. Um, we d went this whole episode without really talking about the election. And I feel like there's some questions in here about that. Probably. Do we want them? Uh, I, yeah. I guess, but like what – I mean we, we, we kind of – doesn't everyone know how it shook out? Or or, there, or is there like deeper stuff than that? I, you guys did good. I just saw a generic yeah, that, one like uh, Jennifer Lynn Crone at Jen Crone on Twitter asked thoughts on midterm. Just like the house like flip, the house flipped, which was what was uh, expected and and hoped for. I think uh, that the Senate did not, which was um, you know expected. that was also expected. You're right. Yeah. They, they also expected that it to stay the same as it was, which is all, the things. The only th surprising things about the midterms um, were that more uh, governors uh, races flipped than expected um, in in favor of the Democrats. But like 
like it not not by like a shocking degree um basically the things that people expect that did expected to happen happened um the long shots didn't happen uh like like um Ted Cruz is still a senator. That was expected. Um, it was it, was, it was possible. Close. Yeah, it was it was close. It was close, but like you know, he was uh, one guy was the underdog, and the underdog lost as they often do. Because, um, but you got you got like the first uh, Muslim representatives. You got the first Native American representatives. Yeah, yeah. So like some cool things happened. Um, so there's that. I'm I'm just not sure what I can add. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's hard to know. Like the kind of people who get paid us to talk about this stuff don't really know what to say. So uh, by the time we release I... this episode, literally so much could have changed. Like t- t- fucking today, Jeff Sessions done did resign. Who knows what the fuck's gonna happen in, in the coming weeks, right? So Jim Acosta is gonna fucking people's elbow Trump. It, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to make any kind of predictions at this point. We it was a good, it was a good election, not a great one. We you know gained some ground. Hopefully, we'll gain more. It's the sad part is we gotta. We only do we this every only time. We need to gain ground by inches. <sighs> it is a it is a war of inches. The like, I don't want people to get upset by this. This is the first step in the fight. Here, here's the thing, though. For the good guys, you have to win every time, constantly. You can't if – if you lose, which is what happened in the last couple of midterms, uh, people's lives are ruined. People get separated yeah. from their families. Kids get put in cages. Like those, those things you can't take back. They can, yeah. they can lose over and over and over again. It doesn't matter because – the rich people are going to stay rich and the people whose lives are ruined are going to stay ruined. So th- their like, well, their reserve of like fighting spirit is basically limitless because they don't want to improve society at all, which is why we have to keep fighting. I know. And it's dispiriting because we feel our losses so acutely and our gains. But this so wasn't marginal. a loss. This was not a loss. All right. 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 The status quo was... did not maintain. No, no. This was de- this was uh, definitely a win. Um, it, I mean, it seems like really obvious that it was, and yet people will are like flooding Twitter. We're like, yeah, but you barely won, so that means that means you didn't. And the Senate it stayed the same. It's like, yeah, yeah. Like all you know, we no very few people were expecting the Senate to flip. The thing, uh, the things that happened in favor of the Democrats happened, and like these small. Uh, Things that happened in favor of the Republicans, you know, did happen. It's like, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to be like shitty about this because, like, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a registered Democrat, but I'm not like a Democrat in that if it feels like my party. I basically just registered so I could vote in the primaries, and you know, uh, but uh, what, what I'm trying to say is like when in 2016 when Trump won, I wasn't on Twitter pretending <laughs> that that like this is actually good for the democrats like like it's off this is obviously a bad night for the democrats just as like last night was obviously a bad night for republicans like can can we at least accept reality we, cl- we oh. clearly clearly can't and it's part of the double right. standards of I, I, this entire system is if a day goes by where trump does not shit directly in his own mouth on tv people are like well, I don't know. It seems pretty stable and presidential now. And if Bernie Sanders doesn't immediately condemn something within seconds of it happening, you're like, he obviously doesn't care. See, he's just in it for himself the whole time. You, f- <laughs> you fools fell for it. You, it's just, yeah. it's always going to be unfair. And that's the burden of having principles. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I uh, I mentioned on Twitter earlier that now that rules no longer apply, uh, the best thing about that is that I'm queen of the universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just want everyone to know that. Do you really want to put that out there? Because the last time you gave yourself a title, people were extremely into you being the Pope so much that it kind of freaked you out and you had to ask them to stop. <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this one ru- run itself out okay. and then I'll tell people to stop. Okay, f- All right. fair enough. Then I'm Emperor of the Multiverse. Oh, wow. It's even more. Yeah, it's really ambitious. Yeah. Uh, n- yeah. Next question. Uh, Cosma Cosma at Merit Kopoika? Cop- 
on Twitter, sorry about the words, uh, asks, are attacks on someone's character common in actual real-life court? Do they work? So, Law Corner. Um, mm. Not only are they common, uh, that's like the, that's the whole thing, essentially. It's called impeaching a witness. Uh, in fact, you could have someone on video, for example, choking someone to death on, on camera phone footage, and they can just get away because the people thought, oh, he seems like a nice guy. <laughs> uh, character and narrative are the really the only things that matter. Evidence, you don't even need a body to get someone convicted of murder. Literally, that's not an exaggeration. All that you need to do is to convince the jury that this is someone they should convict. And you can do that by telling them a story that they want to accept. This person had this motive. They were here at this time. Or by just making their character seem so, so shitty that you want to convict them. And this is obviously something that is racially disparate um I, I, you don't need me to explain to you how that works out uh straight white men are often thought of as like oh he's a nice guy like he's just doing his best out of there maybe he's troubled you know that's the thing you always hear after the mass shootings is like a oh, troubled guy really uh but he was a quiet neighbor yeah uh but if anybody of, of not the higher strata of society makes a mistake well, they're just, they're a bad person. And the only way they're going to learn is if we, you know, we punish them and they have to be miserable because they're bad. So, um, sorry to be dis- dis- <laughs> depressing, but the answer to the question is, that's that's the job, is attacking someone's character. And in fact, uh, there's a bunch of rules of evidence about that. Uh, it's, it's called impeachment. Not <laughs> the impeachment we often talk about here which is about removing someone. Actually, impeachment is bringing formal charges against someone in office in that context. It's not removing people. That's a common common mistake. All right. All right, Austin. Yeah. Like, stay on track. I know. In this context, impeachment is like, oh, you said this, but I have a receipt that actually says you weren't there or something like that. And you're basically just trying to prove the person's a liar. And in fact, there are parts, there are times which what would be inadmissible evidence can become admissible if it is used to impeach someone's character. So that's like, it's like a really good lawyer trick to, if you like, you have something, but you can't use it because of some other rule, you get them to say something where you can then contradict them it's because the rules of evidence say that it's more important for the, the jury to see that than it is for the other rule to be obeyed. So, so, so do you like me, Austin? <laughs> All right. Um, (laughs) This is a whole thing. Yeah, I feel like people have this image of, like, justice or whatever. They're like, oh, I saw CSI. You have to do a a bullet recreation, and then you put it in in the program, and it enhances. You enhance a lot, and then you see the image really clearly, and there's the fingerprint. Yeah, it it happens in ten minutes. Yeah. What actually usually happens is after two years of you sitting in a jail cell and you lose your job and your family, uh, you eventually go and people just – talk shit about you and you do your best to defend that. But you know, you you're emotionally drained and the other people probably have better lawyers. And then the jury just decides if they like you or believe you or not. So does that make you guys feel good about things? No, no, but I, 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 I sort of, I don't, I don't feel anything anymore. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't really assume that justice works. Uh, you know what's fun is the acting much. attorney general of the United States doesn't believe in Marbury versus Madison, the case that makes courts work. Oh. So, like I said earlier, Jeff Sessions... Good luck, motherfuckers! Je- I'm out! Yeah. Je- yeah. Jeff Sessions was asked to resign earlier because he has recused himself from Russia stuff, and so in order to obstruct justice, he needs to be moved out of the way. Which is a whole other tangent. Well, we're not even going to bother with that obviously huge issue because what I want to talk about is his his replacement, the interim acting attorney general, is a fucking gargoyle. And if you look at any of his comments, he is he is not fit to fucking work at a underpants factory, let alone be the attorney general <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> Um, he like all right. No, no disrespect to anyone who works in an underpants <laughs> factory. You you do you do important work, and we all appreciate yeah, it. I'm sure it's a noble Absolutely. profession. Absolutely. I just don't know if you have a great view on the Lochner era of civil litigation. I, underpants friends. 
Um, yeah, it's a nightmare out there. That's the, you can't, that you wouldn't get away with that in any other industry, right? Like, you can't just be like, oh, I, I'm a painter, but I don't believe in paint. Like, it's just, you can't not believe in the fundamental thing about your profession. Not- what? You mean like a, a dude who doesn't believe in, I don't know, climate change being put in front of the EPA? I Yeah, you know, I, I, oh, it is my. basically just a deliberate sabotage at this point because our institutions hold people accountable. And that's exactly what they don't want. So you just make all the, in- the institutions incompetent. Asked and answered, I guess, huh? Yep. Um. Oh, boy. Everything's dis. Pointing. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to find some questions. Beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, beep, 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 boop, 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 beep. I'm trying to find one that we can all talk about because I, I don't want to make Leon sad with more video game questions. <laughs> Uh, Kasirith asked, any reaction to this year's BlizzCon? That was like the highlighting news of video games this week. Oh, yeah. I do. I actually oh, do. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, I, thought I, was, I didn't want kind, to exclude you. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Um, I, uh, while I was waiting for my flight to LA, uh, that, uh, that is also apparently where BlizzCon was happening, or, or at least in the area. Um, I was waiting for my flight to California. And there were some people talking behind me, and they were talking about a convention. I'm like, oh, I wonder if they're going to the same convention I'm going to. And they were not. I would learn later that there is also a gaming convention that was going on near where I was going. Um, And I just cannot stand – I mean, you guys are fine, but I cannot stand (laughs) listening to people, like, talk endlessly about video games and how great their hardware is at playing video games. Um, I just, like, everything they said, I was like, God, these fucking gamer douches. We just, uh, um, I, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I shouldn't shit on people's fun, but like, damn, it was, it was exactly what, what I, I don't want. Uh, and exactly why, like, I couldn't deal with video games for a long while. Just the, the culture. Um, I'm done. I'm done with that now. Please talk about your blizz. I mean, the actual news that came out was at BlizzCon, Blizzard's convention, Blizzard, half of Activision, Blizzard's a media conglomerate that's probably, like, third in the world behind, like, Tencent and Disney. Uh, They had a convention for their video games, and they announced a new Overwatch character, which was fine, and then they announced a mobile installation in the Diablo franchise, and they were... I don't know if this is overstating it, but crucified by their fan base lambasted the, um it was destroyed it was like mainstream um, viral the amount of yeah. blowback they were getting uh not just video game viral and it's of course one, just another entry in the gamers are shit category which is a mm-hmm. thing we talk about very frequently here but it's it's wild when you look under it like even one additional layer which is they were mad that it wasn't a proper diablo like diablo 4 the game that's in development we know yeah. it exists if you have pay any attention to people who knows these things. It's not a secret. Yeah. It, it's what are you mad about that you're not getting the game you're getting? That doesn't you don't have to play the mobile game. And also it's not taking up any development resources from Blizzard because it's made by a different studio. Mm-hmm. It's I'm 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 of two minds a little bit. All right. Um, Give me those minds. Well, uh BlizzCon is a pay-to-attend event. Mm-hmm. So, a bunch of gamer douches fork over money to go. And Blizzard's like, Hey! Look what you didn't want! <laughs> but surely the price of admission is the social opportunity of hanging out with people who have share an interest. If you're just there for the announcement trailers, True. YouTube exists. That's where you can see yeah. announcement trailers. Yeah, right, but I'm, people, I'm people not like, go- but it's like I understand that 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 people pay money to go there, um, but also I want to ask the question: mm-hmm. Why did you pay money to go there? Yeah, I mean I, that's not, you're starting to get into a little judgmental territory. I don't care for Blizzard games particularly, so I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. But at a certain point, you have if you're into Blizzard enough 
to go to BlizzCon. You should also understand that their development cycle is such that they might not have anything to announce. They put out a message yeah. beforehand saying, uh, they actually said literally, uh, good things come to those who wait and evil things take slightly longer, which is just like a joke about like, it's going to be a little longer until the Diablo 4 teaser. It's like, if you like, if you care about them Quake, enough to go, you should know that. QuakeCon is the same way. You know, like, QuakeCon happens, and, you know, people get up on stage and talk about shit. And then everybody has a huge LAN party. And it's like, <laughs> yeah! I mean, I think there is there are notes for PR here. If I was in charge of you know, Blizzard's PR, I would say like, hey, this is a learning opportunity. We should have done what Bethesda did, which is when we announced our bad game no one cares about, we should have then said, and then here's a logo for Elder Scrolls Six. Like, it doesn't matter that that game does not exist right now. It doesn't matter we have nothing to show, but it is just a good move to show the logo because then people won't literally rip our tits off. Yeah. (laughs) Um, you're, You're right. They, they could have just put Diablo 4 in Comic Sans on the last <laughs> slide <laughs> in the PowerPoint no, presentation. No, Papyrus. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, so I, everyone's a fucking goof-ass in this story, and I, I don't know what else we can say. Like, can you be just be cool for like a second? Yeah. Just be cool. Don't, don't shit the bed because you sleep there. And if you paid for it and you feel like you didn't get your money's worth, don't pay for it again. <laughs> um, I don't know. Anyway, next question. This is a very Leon-centric one. Uh, Jas- oh. Jasball, conduit of I'm okay, at Mr. Karome on Twitter asks, what is Leon's favorite non-mainstream theme park? So not Disney is, is my understanding of the subtext here. <laughs> right, right. Um... Shit, it's probably just Bush Gardens. I mean, is that is that? Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't go to the, like lots of them. People <laughs> like they're they're um, uh, I've only recently started going again after many years of just not because I've had other things to do. Yeah, but you're um, under scrutiny now, Leon. So. Yeah, it's true. I've I've been to a bunch of Six Flags. They're all either fine or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now that's that that deep insight you come are... to us for. Sometimes things are good and sometimes <laughs> they're bad. No, no, no. I'm saying they're either fu- they're just okay or they're not even that. That's that's what Six Flags parks are. Um, they're not they're not really. They, I liked one of them when I was I was young because I was like, ooh, roller coasters are fun. But now I'm like, I just want to sit down and look at robots. Um, so I guess I guess it would be Bush Gardens. I've been uh, to like tons of Disney parks, but again, we're, that's not the question. I've been to both Universal Studios uh, places. Um, they're, you know, they're. I've already explained what I, how I feel about that. So Kansas I guess like Wonderland. I I guess I guess I will say uh, it's Bush Gardens. Although it's not like it's it's not like a mom and pop operation. There are two of them for one thing, and for another, it's like owned by a very big company that also has other theme parks. So um, I I don't I don't go to like. I don't know, like like local fairs or or whatever or right or like barely known carnivals um, the impo- yeah yeah or, or carnivals i you know i, I it I, I i like theme parks not just because they they shake me around and stuff i like going to where there's like i, I like at the atmosphere of a theme park where everything's like hyper it, we're in a, like a state of hyper reality <laughs> um which is definitely going to be a, a topic for a future episode um i feel like i want to uh, start yeah. a carnival where every couple of feet there's a speaker just blaring entrance of the gladiators at all times just to create the ultimate carnival experience <laughs> da, 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 and they're overlapping so it's like you go walk five more feet and you hear two of the same time from opposite directions you it would be the best you joke you joke but as i approached universal studios and they i started hearing fanfare i literally said to myself this is my music. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the music I want to hear. Because when I went to uh, Six Flags, they were playing just like a radio station or like 
recent pop hits. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not why I'm here. Um, come on. Yeah, the uh, last time I went to an amusement park, I don't even remember what it was. It was just like a low tier Florida one. I remember so distinctly, so clearly, like a knife in my gut. They were playing Lincoln Park. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I'm Aww. not even like I ain't even that guy, right? Like I own the like first two or three Lincoln Park albums. Like I, okay. I understand it, but still, that's not the atmosphere I wanted. <laughs> right? Um, it can't be crawling yeah. in my skin when I'm trying to hit that coaster. You feel? Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess my 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 um, uh, pick there is uh, Bush Gardens Williams Williamsburg. Mm. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, Johnny gave us a link to his Canadian thing. Do you want to talk about that at all, Can- uh, Canada Boy? Or it's um, it's it's pretty much the theme park in Canada, Canada's Wonderland. The only one. I miss it. Oh, it is. Wait, oh, are you saying it's closed, or are you saying you just haven't been there in a while? I, I, it's in Ontario. Uh, oh, okay. I moved away. Oh, okay. Canada's so big. How do you guys only have one theme park? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we have several. I know I'm an asshole. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> I but, but like I, you know we have one in in Vancouver called Playland. That sounds like I've a kink never, dungeon. I have never been. Okay. And yes, they actually Welcome. do have kink dungeons. Awesome. Welcome to Playland. Drop trowel. Nice. Uh, the only amusement park I can think of that I've been to that I enjoyed that we haven't talked about is uh, Hershey's Park in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. I've been there as which well. Which actually came up on my other show. I don't know why or how. I guess because two of the people on the show are were in Pennsylvania at the time, so maybe that's it. But that's a weird thing. Okay. I just remember eating a lot of candy because Hershey's. Yeah. And that's yep. and that's wrong. What? What? What did he say? I said, and that's wrong. Oh, wrong. Okay. Yeah. I I just thought, like, oh, that's raw? Right. <laughs> I was like, what? That's raw. That's raw? That's so raw to oh, be eating so candy. So raw, man. Just oh, like God. that street eating too much candy. The listeners, yeah. n- listeners know Johnny's uh, connection is not the greatest these days. Um, yeah. We're almost out of time. We got a couple of questions. I mean, Matthew B. Hare at Matthew B. Hare on Twitter asks Delta Rune question mark. Actually, it's Delta Rune, Delta Rune, Delta Rune. That's the new game by Toby Fox of Undertale fame. I mean, no. De- those letters sound familiar. Yeah. Hard pass. Delta Rune is, of course, an anagram for Undertale. I'm, I'm pretending Leon doesn't exist right now. Um, I am going to honor Toby Fox's wishes and not talk about it yet. I think he, he just said don't talk about it for like a day or whatever. But I just want to give people time because they're intensely story-heavy games that can be Austin, ruined. Austin, yeah. this, 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 this podcast isn't coming out for a few days. I, I recognize that. And I also – Yeah, but I haven't played Undertale yet. Oh, okay. I mean I'm the only one on this podcast who has played Undertale, so – I I have played Undertale. I just di- I just didn't play at all of Undertale. You played a third played of Undertale. Up, I played up until the game said I could stop. I got him, guys. <laughs> I, I tricked t- him into I, talking about it again. I I, 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 took, <laughs> I I took that out immediately. Um, I didn't hate it. I want that to be clear. I did not hate it, but it it was it was a very like middling experience for me. And when the game said I could stop. I, I felt like I was just gonna like jump out that emergency exit rather than <laughs> keep going. Um, You're a middling experience. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Aww, Austin. <laughs> uh, don't be no, that's fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what people say. Um, nice, got him. Uh, another question here: <laughs> Krelia Might at Krelia Might on Twitter asks: Now that parentheses wrestling is gone, does anybody have opinions on MMA slash UFC? Yeah. yeah, I mean, kind Fuck of. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Johnny, it's not pure enough for Johnny. Um, I, 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 I watch it sometimes. Um, I used to like watch it consistently, and then I did not, and then I tried to again, and now I do not. Um, every few months, I will just like I don't know, watch a pirated stream of it um, <laughs> when it's on. <laughs> I bet if I disguise my, yeah, it's <laughs> a great me. filter. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it is not hard. You literally just you just Google it. And there's like a million people who don't care. Um, so, but yeah, I, I'm I'm like vaguely curious when there's like a fight with someone I actually care about. But it's rare for me to care about any of these meatheads. So it doesn't happen every day. Um, <laughs> There are there. Are, I shouldn't be rude. Some of them are for sure are perfectly fine gentlemen, and and also ladies. Um, but I I don't know. There's a there's a culture about MMA that is a bit of a turnoff. It's the kind of culture that was um, was and in some ways still is in wrestling. But like wrestling has at least in the fan base, but not like uh, has gotten like hip. Yeah. <laughs> on social media about wrestling whereas mma everything i ever ever see about it is just dudes sweating into the <laughs> it's just like oh i hope he hits him even harder this time it's like really all right um it, there, it there, reminds there... me of porn in a certain way <laughs> just Go in that on. Evening, like <laughs> no that, that people don't understand that it's performative Wrestling or, I mean, wrestling's very no, performative. MMA, MMA. Oh, okay. Like they they don't understand that porn is performative. Like it's not right. instructive. Right. Like this is this is not how you have sex. <laughs> this is not how you have a fight. Is it not? No, I don't no. Know of course not. It. There are there are no points in in a real fight um, oh i see you, where, where, where whereas in, in a in a fight you're basically just trying to live yeah. um whereas in in a mma um there's a there's a point system there are like tons and tons and tons of rules um and thank goodness for that um and all kinds of other stuff not to mention like a build up and like a purse yeah uh, for, but, but in, in people their... people view both of these things both porn and MMA as like, I should be doing this. Oh gosh, don't do either. No, um. <laughs> no, like don't. But like the guys who wander around the street with like tap out shirts and caps, and are like, yeah, you know, I'm like I'm I'm an amateur MMA fighter, so like I know what I'm doing. And it's just like, dude, I'm gonna kick you in the nuts. Who would have thought that a theatric a display of violence would have cultivated a culture of hyper masculinity. Just... Exactly. So yeah. fuck MMA. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I'm, I, I, look, I, I I watch it occasionally. I'm absolutely not going to stand for <laughs> it. So like like you can you can you can say all the shit you want. It's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, in a real fight, I would definitely just kick someone. In the, between the legs uh, and run. I thought you were going to say in a real fight, I would just die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean if if it got if it came to that, I definitely would. Um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just the shock of being in a fight kills you. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. I've 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 been like aggressive to people a, a few times in the past few years. Um, not like you know. As for not because of like I'm mad at someone, but because someone was aggressive to me first. Um, but in no in no point during any of those moments where m my voice was raised was I thinking I sure hope this turns violent. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that is not a thing. Yeah, uh, I mean it's, for it's me. funny because I tried to watch UFC or, or maybe I don't know if it was UFC specifically, but MMA stuff like in high school when I was like yeah. the height of my jock phase. And I, I mean, I, I've said before I just enjoy fighting. I think it's a fun thing to do. I thought I'd be into it, and I just wasn't. Yeah. And I think part of it is that it. It's neither real fighting where the, there's so much drama. If you've ever actually seen like real violence, yeah, like it, yeah. There's just this sudden finality to it. There's it's uncanny and uh, uh, repulsive, and it doesn't quite have that, but it also doesn't have <laughs> the magic circle, which is what you know. The you know, do you guys know about this? The concept of like in game design, where it's like, oh, we're all agreeing to this arbitrary kind of thing like football it's like i'm gonna stand here yeah. to the right time and then i throw the ball and then yeah. we agree to go back to the line it's it's not quite that it's just two people fighting and you can't like I, I yeah i feel like boxing has the magic circle it's it's yeah it's more it's more regimented it's 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 blurry. exactly like there's a there, there's a rule set and guys go into the ring and they're like okay so here's the rules we're not like right. fighting well 
Well, this in, is in, sport. Not saying that MMA yeah, doesn't have I, rules. It does. They're just different. So many rules. It, yeah, it it does. But like, but they masquerade it as ultimate fighting. Yeah, they they, they definitely. It's definitely dressed up to feel like a blood sport, even though they are in fact just two people who are trying to make a dollar. Um, yeah, and I I know this to be true because they've never changed as as long as I've watched. Uh, and again, I don't watch very often anymore. But as long as I've watched the um, intro music to um, the pay per views, is just you know what, Austin? It's the kind of music you listened to the last time you were at a theme park. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, just hyper aggressive, screamy. Uh, I I can't remember the name of the song, but it, it's the same song every single time and it's just so loud and it's like yeah these people are just gonna murder each other it's like dude like half the time it's just they don't they don't care even care who's across the cage from them and the the other half of the time they say that they care but really it's just hype yeah occasionally there occasionally there is a legitimate grievance between them uh that does happen in real life uh Conor McGregor was literally arrested for for attacking the bus of his opponent. And then after the fight, when you would think when what usually what happens after a fight is even when they have like bad blood, um, they usually say, Look, everything's cool now. It's like, oh, okay, so you, you were all lying to me. Yeah. <laughs> this just feels so phony. But at the end of that fight, um, the guy who is not Conor McGregor lost his shit and started legitimately punching People who are not MMA fighter, fighters, uh, like trainers, um, and that was weird uh, to watch and made me feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah, some of the best stuff about sports is the way in which it feels like an organic narrative. Like, teams have existed for centuries. It's like, oh, man, these guys go back. And, like, no, they don't. None of the people were on this team back then, yeah. and they're they're not going to be in the <laughs> Guess future. What? That dude who just scored on you, um, guess what? He was on your team last year. Yeah, like nobody's yeah. actually tied to the geography. Like the Chicago Bears have nothing to do with Chicago inherently. And it's like the team that they are now isn't actually going to have any effect on the team in 100 years or whatever. But it feels like it does. And you have all these narratives. It's like, oh, uh, he's you know he's having a real bad year. Is this when he pulls it out? Or it's like, oh, he's coming back off an injury. Does he, does he you know have the guts to come back? And in fighting, it's usually just like, Either these people are pretending to hate each other or they don't know each other and they're going to have, you know, a 20 fight career and then never be thought about again. It's just it it doesn't have the same quality of almost feeling like uh, a story that was written, but with like really like really organic stakes. And I realize if you're really into MMA, you know, the fighters and you get that satisfaction out of it. But I, I couldn't find it. Just just look at what happened to Mike Tyson, right? He was a huge name, completely and utterly owned by his managers. Mm, Didn't yeah. fucking understand the world. I mean, just did some fucked up shit. I mean, the business and the corruption and stuff. That's, I mean, my understanding. I'm not an expert. My understanding is that's kind of what killed boxing, which used to be like America's sport for a while there. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, these are all you know fake or thrown, or nobody's making any real money, and it's all just backbiting political nonsense and. That's actually, it's kind of what's killing baseball, that and steroids, but so yeah. anyway. It's also uh, – back back to UFC, uh, another reason um, it's like uncomfortable to watch is just the fact that Dana White, the, the uh, president or, or, or the face of the company, is just the hugest Trump supporter. Um, he's, <laughs> he's, he spoke at the Republican National Convention when, when Trump was nominated. Um, Once again, it's a weird that there's this overlap between WWE, <laughs> UFC, masculinity, Trump. There's like almost some kind of common ground. Yeah. I, oh. ju- I just I can't find the link. Mm-hmm. Though. It's unpleasant. It's, it's unpleasant. Just... Yeah, I'm. Uh, I am considering watching uh, wrestling again, but mostly um, Lucha Underground, which I, I hear is good, and just also watching the occasional New, J- New Japan show. Um, I just uh, I think I just need, think I need a break. Um, I guess it's we should o- stop. It's okay. Yeah, we should stop because uh, we've gone on a while, and I'm hungry. Uh, nice. So, <laughs> so there's a good reason. Yeah, was, yeah. Um, all right. Anything you guys want to say right before we go? Hmm. Yeehaw. 
Oh, pfft. I'll take it. He'll take it. Really? All right. I yes. I could I could do more, Leon. But I was trying to give you an easy out. You could just make me look like a fucking lame ass, and then you win because you edited out my entire I'm... Undertale thing. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I definitely did not edit out your Undertale okay. thing. I went my comments about Undertale and how middling it is to be part of the conversation. So uh, eat anyway, a burrito. Before... <laughs> I might. Right, <laughs> smooth go. ass bitch. 